In this video, I'm going to give you a full Performance Max setup tutorial so that you can start boosting your business's revenue with Google Ads right away. At my Google Ads agency, Bigflare, we do over $40 million in annual revenue for our clients and the way I'm going to show you to set up Performance Max is exactly how we do it for those clients. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a lengthy explanation of what Performance Max is or its benefits. If you're watching this video, you likely already know. Instead, I'm just going to dive right into the meat and potatoes so that you can start increasing your Google Ads revenue right away. Also, after the screen share of the setup process, I am going to show you how to manage your bids and budgets after launching Pmax to make sure you grow conversions as quickly as possible. Oh, and by the way, check the link in the description to get access to three guides that accompany this video. You'll get my Performance Max Setup Guide, my Pmax Audience Signals Guide, and my Pmax Asset Group Creation Guide. I'm gonna cover all the material in those guides in this video, but if you would like to download those guides, then you will have a helpful written summary to refer back to later on. Right, with that said, Let's dive into the screen share. All right, so here we are in Google Ads and the first step is going to be to click the plus button up here and load up a new campaign. Now, when you load up the new campaign, I always recommend create a campaign without a goals guidance so that you can get full access to all the settings. And from there, click on Performance Max. And what we're gonna see here is it wants to confirm which conversion goal we want to use. And yep, we've got purchases conversion goals set up here. So we want to use that as an e-commerce account. And uh, if you are an e-commerce advertiser, and this example is going to be showing how to set things up for e-commerce, but a lot of the same things apply for lead gen. The only difference is you won't be adding a product feed, but for e-commerce advertisers, you want to make sure your product feed is connected via the Merchant Center in this spot right here. So once that is all clicked up correctly, simply click continue and give your campaign name something sensible. I'm just going to leave it as the default there because we're just doing this as an example. It's going to ask if you want to create a new campaign or finish a save draft. Yeah, I had a few drafts from before, but we're going to start a new one here. And then now we're into the main campaign setup flow. You're going to want to choose your bidding strategy, and I'm going to cover this in a bit more detail after the screen share. So hang around for that at the end. For now, all you need to know is select either conversions or conversion value. And for e-commerce, I will recommend selecting conversion value. If you're doing lead gen or non e-commerce stuff, then select conversions and then just don't set a target. Leave this one blank. As I say, I'm going to cover this in more detail at the end of the screen share. And you've got an option here to optimize the campaign for acquiring new customers, but this is a meatier topic that deserves its whole own video, which I will publish later on. So do subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to be notified when that video comes out. For now, we're just going to leave that blank and we're going to set up a sort of more standard campaign setup. So let's click next. Now you want to select your locations. So for this particular campaign, we are going to be targeting United States. English is already selected as a language there. Just make sure your language is selected correctly. You've got an option here to have Google automatically create assets and expand your final URL, which means it's going to find a better URL on your site if it looks relevant to the search term. Leave this stuff ticked, but at the same time, we don't really like Google to auto create our text assets, but don't worry if we create all of our own text assets, then Google's only going to fill in the blank with auto created assets if it feels like it can improve the results in that particular auction. So do leave this ticked, but then later on, we're just going to load up our own manually created headlines so that hopefully this feature doesn't actually get used, but we'll leave it ticked just in case. Under more settings, you've got some options for scheduling, uh, start date. Uh, you can put in some URL parameters here if you're using, say, a third-party tracking tool that needs URL parameters loaded. But usually you're not going to need to use these settings down here. You also have the option to exclude your brand term if you want to turn this into a non-brand campaign. Uh, what I normally recommend, though, is 
don't do that and instead just later on we're going to set a ROAS target that reflects the fact that this campaign is getting a mix of brand and non-brand. So click on next and then we go to asset group creation. As I mentioned earlier, I have a downloadable guide uh, link in the description that goes deeper into asset group creation. For now, we're just going to create one asset group uh, with all the products inside there. So name it something sensible in here. Uh, select all products for your listing group and this is something that you can come back and subdivide and create a better structure around later on but for the purposes of the initial setup of your campaign I recommend setting up one asset group initially and then after the campaign is set up you can come back in and set up additional asset groups for example if you've got different product categories on your site you might want to create different asset groups, one for each category, because that will enable you to add images and headlines specific to those product categories. But for now, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to leave it on one asset group so I can quickly show you how all of this is set up. The next step will be to add your assets. So make sure you've got the correct URL here under final URL. That's going to be your store or website URL. And then you've got a bunch of options here to fill in your assets. And you basically just want to max out on all of these. So you can add up to 20 images. And I recommend that you just try and find 20 good images and really max this out. So click the plus box there and you're going to start seeing some options for images to add. Uh, Google is going to give you some helpful suggestions and the options from Google are all well and good. But what I normally find best is to upload your own assets. So hopefully you have a file ready of all your product images and marketing images that you've used in the past. And this is where you can upload those. Uh, if you don't have anything handy or you're looking to do this super quick, you can also scan your website or social images and Google's just going to pull images from there, which you can then select and add to your campaign. Just for an example, I'm just going to grab some images here. Uh, I wouldn't normally do do it so quickly. I would normally upload the images that I think are going to work best, but we are just doing this as an example. So once you've got 20 images added, make sure to add as many logos as you have. Once again, Google's going to try and be helpful and give you a bunch of suggestions. So let's just select a couple of logos there. If you've got five variations of your logo that you can add, then add all five variations. Videos. If you don't add videos, by the way, Google's probably just going to auto create a video. So it is a good idea to add any video assets that you have for your brand. This will mostly be used for retargeting, but depending on your target settings, it might end up being tested with cold traffic. So make sure your videos are good. I do have a separate video on my channel about creating good videos for Pmax and click the plus box there. Once again, it's going to auto grab videos. Your videos do need to be stored on YouTube. So make sure you've uploaded your videos to your YouTube channel previously, and then you can select a bunch of videos to add to your performance max campaign. So let's just go ahead and save those. And then headlines. You can add up to 15 headlines. And once again, wherever it says add up to a number with your assets, just max it out. And I do recommend that you sit here and you really think about the headlines that work best and you want a few different types of headlines. To make this quick, I'm just going to use the suggestions here. Some of the suggestions are pretty good usually from here, but you can normally get better performance out of the campaign by sitting down and really thinking about headlines that are going to work for your business. You generally want a few brand headlines. You want some headlines that have call to actions as well. So that's a call to action example there. Uh, if you've got any benefits or USPs that come to mind, add headlines around that as well. So I'm just going to add a few there uh, and leave it at that. Once again, do make sure you go up to 15 headlines when you're doing this for real. Let's get rid of that. Long headlines. You can go up to five here. You get up to 90 characters with your long headlines. They do get displayed less often than the shorter headlines. But once again, just make sure you go up to the full five recommended headlines and write in your own ideas here. Don't entirely rely on suggestions from Google. Try and make it keyword rich as well. So think about the keywords that people will be searching, the keywords that are most relevant to your product and try and include them in those long headlines. 
you get a bunch of descriptions as well uh, so you just want to max out on descriptions and I'm just going to quickly insert some ideas from Google once again think about uh, what's most relevant to your product and store with the descriptions I normally like to go for something that is relevant to the entire store so the headlines will be relevant to the product whereas the descriptions we can often focus more on what's great about our overall store or brand so this is where you can mention things like uh, your shipping or if you're the lowest price in the market you can mention that if you've got superior customer service turnaround times then you can mention that in your descriptions as well business name nice and simple but it's your business name now you can start adding some ad extensions uh, site links you can actually go up to 20 site links and what you want to do is, let's say we're creating site links for new, you find a URL on your site, you can write two lines of description for that URL and then a headline for the URL as well. And then those site links will get shown in search ads when the result is considered very, very relevant to the user's search. So make your headline text here, once again, keyword relevant. Try and get relevant keywords into your text and then have a link to some pages on your site that would be relevant for that particular keyword. This is where you can link to things like product categories, uh, best-selling products, individual best-selling products, uh, your shipping policy. If you've got a returns policy, you can make a site link for each of all those. You just need to make sure you've got a URL that you can point people to that's relevant to whatever that site link is supposed to be about. Uh, you can go up to 20 site links and once again I recommend that you just max out on site links the more the better. Call to action, I normally like to leave automated uh, because then Google's just going to test through all these call to actions here and use whichever one performs best. And there's a bunch of different asset categories that you can go into here and once again uh, for each one of these just fill out every single one that you can like if you've got a phone number that people can call to get in touch with you add extension for that uh, structured snippets lead forms these are not going to be relevant to every kind of advertiser like for example maybe you're not running a promotion at the moment but if you are running a promotion add a promotion extension so that promotion will actually show on your ads another really important one and everyone can add this are call outs and this is where you can add USPs, benefits, anything that's great about you or your business, you can add as a call out and then that gets added onto your ad. It makes the ad a little bit bigger on the page uh, and it's just kind of free extra ad space. So you want to add in anything that is a good value or benefit about your business. There's some suggestions here, uh, things that we've added previously. Max out your call outs, go up to 20 call outs. So get your thinking cap on there and make sure you really max those out. Next is audience signals. So you want to add audience signals. This helps the machine know which audiences to test. Now it's not actually traditional audience targeting. It's, it's called a signal for a reason. Google's actually just gonna go out and test everyone. But if you add a signal, you're telling Google where to start. You're saying Google, okay, let's not just start out testing everywhere. Here's where I think you're going to get the best results. So please kind of start out there. And it shortcuts Google's learning curve on finding who your audience is. So here you just want to create a name. So let's just call it Pmax Audience Signal. And you want to add in some audiences in all of these. So custom segments. What you can do here, create a new segment and you can target people who searched for particular terms on Google. So you want to plug in your seed keyword terms in here, all the keywords that are relevant to your business, things that people would search for when in the market for your product. So this particular client sells cremation urns. So we're just going to put a few examples in here. You can also copy and paste keywords from your search campaign if you've already got your search campaign set up and you can see which keywords are performing well. Then you can add it in here. I'm just gonna add in an example. Keyword name, uh, sorry, audience name, earns. And that's gonna target people who searched for those keywords, but what we can also do is go back in, create another segment, and this time, 
target people with any of these interests or purchase intentions. So this is a slightly wider form of targeting. Google's going to use its vast amounts of data on its users. And Google knows a lot about those users uh, to try and figure out if they are in the market for these keywords at the moment. So just put in uh, and then you can just plug in the same keyword here. So plug in the, the same set of keywords here. It's a different form of targeting, so it's going to hit a slightly different segment of users. I'm just gonna stick in one uh, for brevity there. Your data, this is where you can add in targeting based on your retargeting lists. So hopefully you've already got retargeting lists connected and set up in your account and just add all of them, right? The, these are super high intent users. Uh, you just want to go for all of them. Uh, if, we, if we browse, we've got a bunch more as well. So add it to cart, all visitors. So this is really gonna help Google figure out who is the most likely to buy on your site. Interests and detailed demographics. It's a few different options here. I like to focus most on in-market. You can search for different audiences in here. So these are kind of predefined lists from Google. If you want to browse all the available lists, you can see them in here. I normally like to add the most relevant in-market lists and in affinity list. So you can use these drop downs and see the different categories that are available and add all the categories that are relevant to your business. Demographics, we're just gonna leave that with everyone on there uh, for now. Click save and you've all added audience signals. From there, let's go to the next phase. Now you want to set a budget. Uh, hang around after the screen share because I'm gonna go into budgets and bidding in a little bit more detail. But what you want to do is set a budget that's reasonably low, uh, but high enough to get some spend. And I normally like to try and aim for at least 50 conversions in a given month. So let's crank that up to say 200. If you don't have much advertising data in your account already, uh, you're not going to see a lot of information here. So just go with a budget that uh, isn't too high for you because we're gonna start out with no target ROAS or target CPA. Uh, and we're gonna adjust this later, so don't worry about it too much. Uh, so for this particular campaign, I know we've got more budget to spare than that. Five weekly conversions is a little bit low, so I'm gonna go a bit higher. Okay, still estimating five weekly conversions. That's fine, these estimates are a little bit off anyway. We don't really know until we launch the campaign and get some data. Now you're going to get a campaign summary, so you can just check everything that you've clicked on, all the settings you've enabled before clicking go. Any issues uh, is are gonna be displayed up at the top here. So do, leave, do go through all of this, fix any issues that come up. Uh, make sure this all looks good to you. And then you'll be able to publish your campaign and get going. All right, that was the walkthrough of the setup process. But what happens after you have set up and launched your Pmax campaign? The most important thing to do is to correctly manage your budgets and bids to ensure you bid enough to get good market share whilst remaining as profitable as possible. So here's how to do that. For a new Pmax campaign, I recommend starting with a maximize conversion value bid strategy for e-commerce or maximize conversions bid strategy for lead gen. Now here's the trick. For a new campaign, do not set a target. Instead, just let Google try and get you as many conversions or as much conversion value for the budget as possible and set a reasonably low daily budget to last you through that testing mode. After you've launched, you then want to sit tight and wait for data to come in. Ideally, you want to wait for about 50 conversions to come in, then have a look and see what your average ROAS or CPA was over that time period and set a target that is slightly better than what the previous average was. Wait again for another 50 conversions, then once again, set a target that is slightly better than what it was previously doing in terms of CPA or ROAS. Keep doing that until you've got up to the target ROAS or CPA that you actually want to achieve. Now, if you get a month into this and you have got nowhere near to 50 conversions yet, it could be a sign you need to increase your daily budget to get more conversions in a shorter period of time. Once you've gotten your Pmax campaigns underway, you'll probably want to know some more advanced methods and strategies for optimizing your campaign. 
don't worry, I've got you covered there. Check out this video that's showing up on the screen now to see some of my more advanced performance max strategies.